Okay, let's move on to lesson number 10. This is your last lesson, flight physiology. Many of your students will be new to aviation and have little understanding how physiology relates to aviation. While you don't need to be a medical expert, it's still your responsibility to teach your student what they need to know about such topics as hypoxia and other flight-specific physiology matters. Okay, let's get underway. Hi, I'm Dave Seleski. This is Lesson 10, Flight Physiology. You as a flight instructor need to not only understand the principles of flight instruction, but you also need to know how the human body reacts to the forces of flight. You need to keep a keen eye on your student to ensure that the lesson is productive and that he or she is not negatively affected by motion sickness and other detrimental factors. Your student also needs to understand the limits and regulations concerning flight physiology. This lesson contains these topics. Principles of flight instruction, fitness for flight, supplemental oxygen, spatial disorientation, motion sickness, and collision avoidance. Let's begin with principles of integrated flight instruction. So what is integrated flight instruction? Well, integrated flight instruction means that each maneuver should be performed by using both outside, visual references, and flight instruments. When pilots use this technique, they develop proper habit patterns for instrument interpretation and aircraft control, which increases their overall piloting ability. This results in less difficulty in holding desired altitudes, controlling airspeed during takeoffs, climbs, descents, landings, approaches, and in maintaining headings in the traffic pattern, as well as on cross-country flights. Distractions are used throughout the flight training process to help the student develop skill in maintaining control of the aircraft while he or she has their attention diverted. Some appropriate distractions for flight training are simulated engine failure, simulated radio tuning and communications, identifying a field suitable for an emergency landing, identifying features or objects on the ground. This is appropriate for use when the student is practicing S-turns. Aeronautical decision making, ADM, is a systematic approach to the mental process used by aircraft pilots to consistently determine what the best course of action is in response to a given set of circumstances. Risk management is the part of the decision making process which relies on situational awareness, problem recognition, and good judgment to reduce risk associated with each flight. The ADM process addresses all aspects of decision making in the cockpit and identifies the steps involved in good decision making. Steps for good decision making are identifying personal attitudes hazardous to safe flight, learning behavior modification techniques, learning how to recognize and cope with stress, developing risk assessment skills, using all resources in a multi-crew situation, evaluating the effectiveness of one's ADM skills, 